Welcome to the Jill on Money Show. It is Thursday, June 29th. Oh, just a couple days left in the quarter, half year up. I can't believe it. And I also can't believe just how amazing it is to be able to answer your financial questions every day. I love this. I love this part of my job. It's so much fun. And if you've got a question, if you have something that is you know, maybe eating at you or maybe an issue is cropped up in your life or maybe you're thinking about doing something different in your work life. Maybe it's a downsize. Maybe it's an upsize. Maybe you're starting a new business. Anything like that, we'd love to hear from you. All you need to do is go to our website, jillonmoney.com, click the contact us button and let us know if you would be willing to come on the air. And when you are contemplating all these changes, you may want to have a little, um, guide, a little guardrail to this decision-making process, I have a great idea. Check out my book, The Great Money Reset, because this is exactly what I did in writing this book, trying to help people make big life decisions without blowing up their financial lives. So you can buy The Great Money Reset on our website or wherever you get books. Okay, let us move on. Let's get to the matter at hand. We have Richard, who is joining us from the state of Michigan. Hi, Richard. How are you? Hi, Jill. Hi, Mark. Thank you so much. I'm good. What brings you to our airwaves, Richard? Here's the situation. So my wife and I are both 63 years old. I'm currently still working, going on 42 years at the same company. I know that sounds crazy. And we have two small homes, two small places, one for the summer and one for the winter that we get away. But we're looking to purchase a condo near our grandkids in the Detroit metro area. So looking at getting another mortgage, purchasing a property. We downsized probably three years ago, got rid of our older, bigger home with the intent of buying. Of course, got caught up in the crazy market. So we kind of sat on the sidelines and just used our, our summer home and then bought a winter getaway. But we still want that elusive last home. So we have, we're looking at a, currently looking at a condo at the 360000 price. The owner has oddly a uh, assumable mortgage, which is kind of rare these days, but, um, and we would be purchasing this by owner. Mm. They, she owes 150000 So what I would like to do is rather than either getting a second mortgage if that's what I have to do, but I would prefer to use my retirement savings, um, which I know is generally a no-no, but if I could do it tax efficiently and grab the additional 200, 210,000 in cash from, from our retirement savings to purchase this home and then have just a small payment with like 12 years left on a 15 year mortgage at three and an eighth, that's kind of what we'd like to do. So that's the situation. This is an interesting one. Let me ask a couple of other questions. So first of all, you said you're working. How much are you earning right now? I earn 120000 a year. And does your wife also work? No, she's no longer working. COVID kind of shut her business down. She was a tennis teacher. So she's um, kind of just, uh, just uh, hanging with the dog and uh, the grandkids and Enjoying life, but good. For, uh, and it's it's great. We're in a great position. We've been blessed. So glad she can do it. On your one hundred twenty thousand, are you able to just completely meet your needs for the summer house, the winter house, eating, you know, everything, all those expenses? Is that does it work for you? Yes, that works for us. Um, and I also am still maximizing. Uh, well, what what is it? Twenty two or. Whatever I'm able to put away, my company matches uh, six up to six on the first six percent. But we, I've been a kind of a max saver for a while. So, how much money have you squirreled away in that retirement savings that you would tap two hundred of it? What's the total amount in retirement savings right now? Total amount in retirement savings is two point three between my four hundred one k and my wife wife and I have a small IRA and she has an inherited IRA as well. When did she inherit that? Um, about, let's see, probably seven or so years ago. Besides the 2.3 million, do you have other money saved in an investment account maybe or in, um, in savings or checking or I bonds or CDs, anything else that's saved in addition to that 2.3? We have uh, 
thirty some thousand in the HSA and another eighty thousand in a couple of between checking and online bank accounts. That's sort of like or that is our emergency fund. And if we needed to get a down payment going, we would use that and replace it. How much longer do you think you're gonna work, Richard? At least to the end of the year. Um, but if I continue on this path, I'm able to work remote. I'm just going to always want to work. So I might as well keep working. They're not killing me. They've been pretty good to me. Don't make a fortune, but, Mm -hmm. um, it's been a great company. So I think I'll, I'll ride it till maybe 64, maybe 65. The two homes that you have summer home and winter home, how much are they worth? And what kind of mortgages are outstanding on those? Yeah. So no mortgage. These are paid for free and clear. Um, they're, glorified mobile homes type of uh, park mm-hmm. model. Um, but combined value, um, if needed to sell them, we could sell them relatively quickly, about 200K. What's your um, full retirement age social security benefit? I believe the last time I poked at it, it was a, about 24, 26,000 a year, not huge. And would your wife claim half of your record? Yes. Yeah. She will use mine. Um, she worked, you know, good part of her life, but she would use mine as the way it's calculated now. It just, it would make more sense. Do you know, forgetting about this, this contribution that we're going to pull out of your retirement account to make this condo payment, do you know how much you guys really need to live on a year? Well, I've calculated it somewhere around once we stop. Uh, donating, if you will, or uh, say, excuse me, in, investing in in the four hundred one k, eighty to ninety thousand mm-hmm. would be comfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, but I guess in reality, so we could do a, a nice trip or two a year around the hundred would be a safer bet. Look, if you keep working until you're sixty seven, let's say, okay, I'm just going to put it out there. These numbers will lot look a lot better. Because you won't have to dip into your assets at all in the intervening years before Social Security. And it says, you said, you know, work in a few more years when it's not like they're not killing you. It's all right. I don't think it's a bad, it's not a terrible idea to make this thing happen and pull it from your retirement accounts because you guys actually have a lot of money in retirement assets that haven't been taxed yet. Were you thinking that you wanted to do this as a loan against your current plan or a withdrawal from the IRAs and the inherited IRA? I was considering not the loan. That option is there through my company, but it's only 50K. My thinking was to use a combination of the Roth IRAs and the 401k uh, pre-tax and just pay the tax now in the 22% tax bracket. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know if I would do the Roth. I might leave that Roth alone. So can we come up with 200 grand between the inherited IRA and your other IRAs, not your current 401k? Can we come up, can we get to 200 from that? No, we would be short. That would be about 150 or so. I feel like you're going to make this happen no matter what. I don't love this plan, but I'm going to tell you what I think you ought to do. To make this happen, what I think you probably are going to want to do is exactly what I just said, which is you will take the inherited and the other IRAs, you'll get that cash out, and it'll actually make your life a little bit easier down the line. Not from Roths, from only the pre-tax. And, you know, you'll be able to get to, oh, let's see, you can pull out a lot, you know, because you'll be in the 24% tax bracket. We'll just pay the tax at 24% on this money and so be it. Okay. And then we have to come up with the uh, remaining money. Can you do an in-service withdrawal from your current plan? I mean, if I go to my company's benefits site, it says that I can pull up to the full amount pretty much and they just withhold the tax. Oh, so if you are allowed to, that's fine. We need to accumulate non-retirement assets for you, especially because this house is going to get done. There's going to be expenses associated with it. So what I think you're going to do is you're going to pull the money out of some combination of the pre-tax retirement, okay? I know you have to pay the 24% bracket. It's okay. You're going to do it for a year. It's going to be fine. And then next year, or even now, right now, rather, you're going to drop down your contribution to 6%. You capture the full match. And then any money 
that you need to kind of bridge the gap in expenses. You're going to have to see how things go. But, you know, that 80 grand in cash over the next few years, you know, we just want you to try to build it up and get more money in cash because, I mean, you're going to manage three different properties. Your get out of jail free card is that you got 100 grand in equity in the summer place and you can keep working. And that to me is kind of the the genius of this. The thing is, at your full retirement age, you know, three grand a month is only a third of what your actual need is. So you're, it's tight. It is going to be tight for you guys. Meaning that if you have, you know, we're going to pull money out of these accounts, right? So it, you're not going to have $2.3 million anymore. So if you, let's say you had $2 million when all is said and done, because we had to pay tax and that 2 million, you know, we have to make sure it grows, but you know, it's not going to grow from 2 million to 5 million you know, you're going to just about make it between social security and the money that you can pull from these accounts to live your life. So in the back of your mind, there are two pieces of this that you can really control. One is that like in the year where you don't need to spend a hundred grand, you can spend 80 grand. That's great. The second thing you can control is how long you work. The longer you work, the better this plan works for both of you guys. And if you decided to wait and keep working, say, until you were 70, because life is good and you feel happy and you love your Detroit condo and all this, then the numbers will get even better because you won't dip into your retirement assets until 70 and your social security benefit is going to go up. So those are the things you can control other than not buying this condo, right? Of course, I'm going to point out to you that, you know, the the obvious thing is that, you know, over time, you're not going to likely maintain three places, right? You're just not. Do these options seem amenable to you? Yep. Those those all seem good. The most important thing is that you feel like you have options and that you know that you have some way out. I mean, listen, it just so happens that having an assumable mortgage is an amazing feature of this. If you were having to pay six and an eighth, not three and an eighth, I'd be like, no way, you're not doing it. Was that was the kicker for me when, and I just asked asked the seller just off out of the blue. I said, "Hey, by chance, can you?" She, I don't know. And she called up. It was an FHA mortgage, and it was assumable. So, for anybody listening, that's just an interesting tip if that's out there because three percent as opposed to six plus percent right now is just fantastic. Really, absolutely, that's a game changer for you. So, I think that um, we got you set. Don't go crazy. And keep working. That's my and, and see. Let us know how this goes when closing this deal because I'm interested in the assumable mortgage. Make sure you have a great lawyer who can who's going to walk you through this process. We want every single I dotted and T crossed in it. Okay. Yeah, I will do that. All right. We wish you the best. Make sure your state documents are done and do all that good stuff so I don't have to bug you about it. If you are thinking about a real estate transaction and using your retirement funds to actually make it happen, then that's a possibility. And, you know, you heard as we started this, it was funny because we always have this, I have this moment where like, Richard sort of sheepishly says, I know you don't want me to do this, or I know you, you know, it is true that we don't usually like the idea of accessing retirement funds to make a real estate transaction. You have to pay tax. But in this case, you know, they've saved a couple million dollars. Life is pretty good. And, you know, honestly, it sounded like Richard and his wife really want to do it. So let's see if they can do it. And if you're willing to work longer and make some of the other concessions that could be necessary in the future, then a lot of these quote unquote dreams or these aspirations are really doable. So as long as you can figure out a way to give yourself a little bit of a fail safe option, I think that's very helpful. If you're going through the same kind of analysis in your household, go to our website, jillonmoney.com, click the contact us button. Do let us know if you would like to come on the air, check out all the content that lives on the website. There's the resources section, there's videos, there's the blog. And also, of course, sign up for the free weekly newsletter. Comes out tomorrow, every single Friday. All right, put your hands metaphorically on someone's back. Change your work, change your wealth, change your life. Thank you for listening. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Tomorrow. 